everybody. So, in video 1743, we made this thing, and I'm stroking it because it's beautiful, <laughs> eh? <laughs> and we made it out of plumbing fittings. Now, it's been a popular video, and there's been loads of really good questions done. So, I thought I would do an update. Now, me and Luke are doing our sort of usual thing, getting a bit of breakfast together. We're going to have some coffee and a, and a bacon sandwich. And, of course, this time we're going to do it on our new stove for a change, just so you can see it working. And a few people have asked, well, how do you do that? What you need is this. This is a trivet. Now, a trivet is just a cross of metal that holds your kettle off your bench when you put your hot kettle or your hot pan just to stop it burning the pan. So you need a trivet. Now, I've got this trivet and it just slots on there. What you need is something that will do that. So like a drain cover, a base of a lamp or something like that. Slot it on your pipe. It doesn't need to be an exact fit. It can be a wobbly fit. As long as it's got a cross of metal on there, and that's where your pan and your kettle go. Okay, let's get this thing lit up and start a bit of breakfast. Good idea? Yeah, absolutely fantastic idea, mate. Awesome, mate. <laughs> let's do it. That was a couple of minutes and you can already hear it roaring as it's supposed to like a rocket stove. And you can see the flames licking out of here, you see the heat rise, you see there's no smoke. So let's put a kettle on. Okay, while that boils, these things are named after the letters of the alphabet, L, J, K and V. This one is a J type because it looks like a J. Now the simplest type is the L type. The L type just has this arm and this arm and this is what it looks like. Now to make an L-type, what you'll need is two bits of pipe and this elbow and a bit of steel plate. This pipe's 500 by four inches, it's uh, 100 millimeters. This is a four inch pipe fitting. You need another piece, 300 by 400, uh, 100 millimeters. Then you slot them together and glue them together with the silicate just like we did in the uh, video 1743. There's one more thing you need to do if you refer to the picture again. You can see that there's a plate. So we have here a plate. Now this is 100 millimeters across. So you buy your plate about 95 millimeters by about 200 millimeters and the plate slides in there. The fuel goes on top of the plate. The sl plate slides about that far back. Fuel sitting on top air comes underneath and you get your rocket stove. So the L-type is the simplest type to build. Now, these are quite expensive fittings in one sense. That's about 30 pounds. That's about 11 pounds and that's going to cost you about nine pounds or so. So you're looking at something like 49 pounds to make the simplest L-type. Now, of course, I made this because I wanted to shove off. So I made quite a pretty one that's all bells and whistles. If you don't want that, then the next thing you're going to make is the J-type. For the J-type, you're going to be including this bit here. This bit's about 50 pounds. So with just the L-type, this bit, this bit, this bit, and the plate, you're looking at about sort of 40, 50 pounds. You'd buy this from somewhere like uh, BIS or uh, Plumbing Supplies. I'll put the links in the video. This you get from a cutting surface, and there's quite a few cutting surfaces around. I use metals for you because they will cut everything that you want with no extra charge and you just pay for the metal that you use, including this. If you ask for a plate 200 by 95, that's what you're going to get. And you can get that in three to five millimeters thick, no problem at all, probably cost you about a couple of quid or so. Quid, English slang for pound. Um, so it's really easy to do the L-type, you get it all the same places and those are the measurements of the L-type. In the J-type, what you would do is get this elbow, this T. Then you need 500 by 100 pipe and one, two, three pieces of 150 by 100 mil pipe. Again, from Metals For You. And I, I'm not getting paid for them, they're just the easiest place I've found to get this stuff from. They'll cut it for you, it all comes to size, you slot it together just like we did in the video and glue it in with this stuff. Now this stuff is a Unibond product and it is a silicate putty. 
Well, that means is it's basically magnesium or calcium silicate. When you put the putty in, it's wet. You leave it to dry. When the heat gets to it, and it's about 700 degrees centigrade there, it will turn that putty into a hard glass. And that locks everything in place. So that's now a ceramic filler. Now, it's sold for stoves. If you're looking in the US, I don't think they do that Unibond product. There's another product called Stove Cement, which is exactly the same thing. The key to it is it needs to be rated to about 1,000 to 1,200 degrees centigrade. As long as it's rated for that, the used for stoves, it'll do this job. And it makes, say, it makes like a, a chemical weld because that now is a ceramic glass that's going to be one hell of a job to break up. So if you want this J-type, you're going to be paying for this bit here, which is going to be an extra £50 because that's quite expensive. So L-type is going to cost you in the region of sort of £50 or so to make. The J-type here is going to cost you in the region of sort of £90 to £100 or so to make. So they are expensive, but then they're super, super easy. And actually, they're a bit cheaper and certainly longer lasting and certainly prettier, I think, than the stuff that you can buy. Now, I did go to town because I want to do other things with this. So I bought these nipples, one, two, three, four, and these feet. But you don't need to buy those. I just bought them because they're adaptable. There's something else I want to do with it and I can add on to it. Let's check that water. Okay, that's the water boiling. Uh, Luke, would you mind making a bacon, mate? <laughs> of course I know my bacon. Awesome, mate. Pour a bit of oil in there, mate. Fantastic, mate. Here's a nice cup of coffee. Oh, whoa, thank you, mate. Ah, oh, no worries. Okay, so we've talked about the L-type, we've talked about the J-type, the next type is the K-type, and that's the type you see very often used for picnic stoves. And what it is, instead of having this here, they have it here as a kind of like swept area, still have this bottom piece, you drop your fuel in the swept area, then you can get these in a swept Y, and that would be great for the K-type. I didn't look to see what they were because um, I, I, I just think it's a bit more puffing on than's needed. I like the J-type and it's a bit more adaptable. The K-type would mean that you couldn't really turn it easily into an indoor heater, but it's meant for picnics, so why not? I the smell of bacon in the morning, mate. <laughs> it smells too good, I tell Sizzling you Sizzling away, is it? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay, so the final type of this that you'll find is called the V-type. It's kind of a cross between the K and the L. You just have a single swept area here, and then remember on the L-type, we had the plate, when it's an L, we put the plate in, so that we got the fuel on top of the plate, the air under the plate, and the V-type, it comes like that, with a V like that, and the plate goes in, and the fuel goes on top of the plate, and the air can go behind the plate, so it's a bit like a cross between a K and an L. You find the V-type, as far as I can tell, in an awful lot of hopper-fed systems. Anyway, let's get the bacon out, to make a sandwich or two. I'm sure you don't want my horrible things with that. <laughs> You know, Matt? Cool, that is good. That is good. Did you get any uh, ketchup? I forgot the ketchup. Oh, man! Oh, <laughs> why did you say that? <laughs> Dude! Oh, that looks good, mate. That does look good. Extra thick bacon. There you go. So this bit that you put over the cap, of course I bought this cap head, but actually anything will do. It doesn't get a lot of heat, even just a flat piece of steel over there is going to do the job. But if you want something pretty, then get something pretty. If you want something else, then even a lightweight piece of steel to cap that will do that job fine. Uh, one of the things that I get asked quite a lot is how much ash does it produce? And if you've never used one of these things, you'll be used to lots of ash. Once you use one of these things, it's going to surprise you how little ash there actually is. I mean, at the end of that breakfast, what we got out was basically, I don't know, about a thimble full of ash from the wood that we burnt in there. So it produces very little ash anyway. And the other thing I get asked is um, control of it. I mean, this thing just burns the wood as it burns the wood, and that's because you're cooking, so you don't have that much control over it, nor do you really need it. If you're using it for an internal heater, of course, you need a bit more control over that. You do that by putting a damper on the front. You can either have a plate here or a baffle plate here, so you're either reducing the amount of air that goes in or the amount of draw that you're getting on your chimney with a baffle plate. Well, either one of those is good. 
Here, what you would do is put a blanking plate on with a slide, but that's for later when we do the adaptation to get take this indoors. Outdoors is a camping stove, cooking stove, um, basic heater, that sort of thing. Then you wouldn't really bother. You just put the fuel in there, and when it burns, it burns. For more control, you need to either have a damper in here or a control over the amount of air going in here. Okay, this is definitely not the healthiest of things. I think you put about an inch of butter on the roll. <laughs> Now you might have noticed I used these steel things here on the trivet when we were using the frying pan. That's because the frying pan is so big, it acted like a cap, and so I put razors on. Now this is a new experiment to me, I might make that trivet a bit higher just to take account of being able to use a frying pan on it, but it cooked the water beautifully. Anyway, I thought I'd go through the different types, demonstrate how to use this type, talk about the costs involved, depending on what you want to make. Now obviously, I went to town because I'm, I'm in love with it, so I did something a bit more than perhaps I needed to do. Certainly you don't need to do that. And I've given some measurements about what you need. There'll be some links for the uh, places where you can get these things. And of course the whole point of this is that it is stupidly easy to put together with no welding, no tools, no experience. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to enjoy my sandwich and <laughs> let's see you again in the next video. <laughs> nice one, man. That is spot on. <laughs>